Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Today is the big day. Today we are officially finishing off Entity Component Systems by and large. We may end up modifying the code at some point, probably mostly for aesthetic reasons, but this is the last video of real big work on the system. So, what are we doing today? Not much. The biggest thing we're doing is focusing on how does our update system with multiple components method work well with the cache. We're not going to do something too intense. We're going to see what low effort things we can do to possibly improve it. So what are those things? Let's find out. Let's go. There are two relatively straightforward things we could do that could help the cache usage of this method. So I'm going to do that, and after that I'm going to point out the remaining issues with the cache usage in this method, so that you could potentially fix them on your own later on if you're so inclined. So to start with, one thing we can change is git component internal. So right now, the way we have git component internal defined, it is looking up the component array in the map every single time. That is almost certainly going to cause some cache problems because you have to navigate the map through a series of pointers, like a tree of pointers. So depending on how good your compiler is and what it does, this might be able to avoid that, but we can pretty easily avoid that risk with some slight changes anyways, so I'm going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to take in the array of components as a parameter to get component internal. So we have not just that, but we also have that, and once again, I am lost for a good name, so I'm just going to call it Array. And this makes this really easy, because now we can replace this lookup with just straight the Array, and at this point, there's really no notable cache issues with this method. Assuming all these parameters are readily available, we're going straight through a linear Array, and then we're returning a result in a second Array. As long as both those arrays are in cache somewhere, we're pretty good. So that's an easy fix we can do to just improve cache usage a little bit. And under Git Component Internal, I'm going to add this as a parameter. Where is... there we are. And this also means we need to change up the Git Component method. Here, we can't really take advantage of this because we're going to have to look up the components array sub the component ID anyways. So, unfortunately, we don't get it in this case, but in our internal case, we can do better, so we will do better. All right, and the only place we use git component internal is in our update system of multiple components. So how can we take advantage of this extra parameter to improve cache usage? Obviously, if I just pass it straight in here, components, sub, whatever, then that's not doing much. That's doing the same sort of thing that we did to begin with. So the idea is we're going to move that lookup of components outside both of these loops so that we only do it once, and then we can, once we know the location of these arrays, then we can just reuse them every single time for all of these. And in theory, that should have better cache behavior. So to actually do this, I'm going to do a tr similar trick for our component param. I'm going to have component arrays. You probably see where this is going. So this is going to be a pointer to our, yeah, our array. And granted, yeah, we're still doing this by pointer technically, so this will be in direction the first time we look at the array, but since we're in theory not going to have a lot of these, they should be able to keep all the arrays in memory. That's the theory. If we have a lot of arrays, then we're probably not going to have good cache behavior anyway, so yeah. But that's the theory. After we look it up, it should all be in memory, and then it'll be good to go. So we're going to pass component arrays as a parameter here. We're also going to take in the reference to this right here, and we're going to add that to the method signature, wherever that is, right here. And again, make sure it's by reference. Perfect. So with all the housekeeping out of the way, we're actually not quite done with the housekeeping because I forgot we need to resize this so that it has enough for every single type. Because obviously, for each type, there's one array. 
So same logic, just replace component param with component arrays. And now we can do our preemptive lookup. So I'm going to iterate i equals 0, i is less component types dot size, i plus plus. There we go. What we're going to do, really easy, component arrays sub i is going to be equal to component types sub i. And we're going to look up the components array sub this. And we're going to have to do this by address because we have to do it by pointer. Unfortunately, you cannot have a point an array of references. So, oh well. And there you go. So, with that, we can get rid of this array parameter because that's redundant. Now we have that in our component arrays. We can replace the array with component arrays sub zero because, well, that's what it was. If I undo for a moment, it was the same logic just for component type zero. And yeah, and now we can finally fuel get component internal with component arrays sub j. And there we go. And with that, now we have component array cache behavior very similar to our one case. And in the case of just one, we're iterating through the array one at a time. The array is pretty much always there, ready to go. Here, we're iterating through the array one at a time. The array is pretty much always there, ready to go. If we need to look at more, that array is also there, ready to go, because we know what types of arrays we need ahead of time. So we have all the arrays ready to go. And yeah. So that's the first thing we can do relatively easily to potentially improve cache behavior. The other thing we can do that's relatively straightforward is Let's say we're updating multiple components, and we have two component types. For the first component type, there's 10,000 of those components somewhere in the world. 10,000 entities have that component. So we'll go through the array, we'll go through 10,000 times, but for the other one, there's only, say, 10 entities with that particular component. So why are we looping through this array 10,000 times when, at most, there's 10 entities in the entire system that could even possibly be what we're looking for. That's something we can easily improve just by not iterating over array 0, but whichever array has the least number of components. And also, I forgot to update this array to be component arrays sub 0. So that's, again, a relatively straightforward thing we can do just to make things a little bit better. I'm going to isolate this in its own method. So I'm going to create un32 find least common component, and it's going to take in the const array of component types. And this is going to return whatever index has the least components. So this method, I'm going to indent properly, and I'm also going to put ECS in front of it. Which, by the way, I appear to have forgotten with update system of multiple components. That's probably important. And there. So I'm going to start with just a un32 size. I'm going to initialize to 0 for now. You'll see in a moment. And min, actually I'll call it min size. Probably more descriptive. And min index equals 0. At the end, I'm going to return whatever index has the minimum sizes. So I'm going to iterate i equals 1, I'm assuming that i, well, yeah, I'm assuming i is, or min size is going to be initialized to whatever the size of component 0 is. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create un32 size, and this is going to be a little tricky to initialize, because what we need is we need to go to ecscomponent.h, there you are, I had you highlighted, because we're going to be using the get type size method. So I'm going to call it type size, which equals base ECS component, get type size, and we're going to pass in min size. Sorry, index. Component types sub i. There we go. <laughs> it's a little tricky, but yeah, that will give us the type we're looking at. And now, in size, what we can do is we can look at components sub 
that particular component type, default types of i. We can look at the size of it, and we can divide that by type size. So this will tell us the actual number of components as opposed to, say, the amount of memory the components take up. This way we aren't favoring big components over small components. And yeah, that should be it. So with that out of the way, what I should be able to do now is a basic comparison. If size is less than min size, then min size becomes size, and min index becomes i. And there we go. So the reason I did this is so that we can initialize min size properly. Now I can copy and paste with replacing type size with this for component 0, and component types sub 0. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could avoid copying and pasting, but unfortunately I don't know a good way to avoid that in this particular instance. So, oh well, I'll live with it. And yeah, so now what I can do is I can create a uint32 called min size index, which equals this of component types. And with all that done, finally I can replace everywhere from addressing zero implicitly with this min size index. And that should be just about everything. So component param, min size index. We're going to look at component arrays at the min size index. Again, component param at the min size index. J here, we're going to say J. If J is at the min size index, we're going to continue. And that, I think, should be just about everything. All right, time for the bug fixes. So in the header file, there's just a couple typos. This array of base components should actually be base ECS component. And the component arrays somehow, I'm pretty sure I meant to put that as reference, but I guess I deleted it at some point. So just make sure that's by reference. At the top, we need to include math slash math HPP. I fixed that in a second. And we need under update systems, base ECS component, not, yeah. And same sort of thing in the header for update system with multiple components. And this is where I fixed the math at HPP. Now, under update system, small typo, component param, not component params, yeah. And under here, I have an error somehow. Right. Here I realized that because component arrays are by pointer, the syntax gets weird. So I reintroduce the array reference just like it was before. And I dereference it specifically with the pointer operator. And yeah, now I just replace where I used that with array. So it's just like before. And lastly, same sort of thing applies to key component internal. That needs to be dereferenced because we're, well, they're pointers. And that should be all the bugs. It should compile now. So with that, I'd like to once again emphasize that this method is not cache perfect, very far from it. Most notably, where we have our entity components array, we're doing a double dereference, and we're doing that every single iteration through this outer loop. If you don't see the double dereference, look at handle to entity. We take the raw type, which is this pointer, and dereference it to get this array. That's the first dereference. The second dereference, when we access this array, well, the array stores its data in a pointer internally. Accessing that pointer is the second dereference. So two dereferences every iteration. That's probably not the best for cache performance. And as far as I can tell, there's not actually a very great way around that in our current paradigm. Maybe if we went for a totally different paradigm, we could get around it, but yeah, without drastic changes, I don't see a good way around this. So this would probably be the big part where we go for more cache performance if that's necessary. But at this point, we probably have enough for most games. So I wouldn't worry too much about it unless your profiler says, hey, all your time is being spent in this loop dereferencing pointers. And that's not the only problem ish. Oh, yeah. That's not the only problem either. I mean, just because we're accessing things in arrays doesn't mean the access is contiguous right here. Yeah, this array is pre-cached, so the array itself should be in the cache, but 
you know, if the index of the component is just scattered randomly throughout the array, it's very possible that we're jumping to a point in the array that's not in the cache every time we look it up. This should be somewhat mitigated by the fact that we're mostly storing components in the order they're created, which should mostly be the order the entities are created. But that does get shuffled around when we remove components and entities, and who knows, maybe it's different. So that's another area where we could potentially have some caching issues. Caching is not an easy problem, but we have what should probably get us through to start with, and as always, we can do more if necessary. For now, though, we have a complete working entity component system. We could do stuff with this. But how? How can we build our first game scene using this entity component system? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I'll see you next time where we're going to do our first real solid bit of game development in the series. Thank you, and I will see you then. As always, if you'd like to talk more with me or other like-minded people, please join the Benny Discord. It's a fantastic community where you are always welcome. If you'd like to support these videos, or you'd just like to find out right now, consider becoming a patron on Patreon, because you can get early access to videos, special bonus video materials and notes, you can get special roles on Discord, and you might even get a special thank you in these videos. Thank you very much to all my patrons for your support. You are why these videos are possible. And a very special thank you to those listed in the video description. Thank you. See you then.